in the love of God and welcome you to the worship service here at Greater St. Paul Baptist Church, 896 South Adams Avenue in the Queen City of the Washita, Camden, Arkansas. Come on now and join us as we go into the worship service. Good morning. Our scripture reading comes from Psalm 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bring forth his fruit in his season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but like the shaft which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment of sinners in the congregation of righteousness. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly. The Lord knows the, the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. The Lord have blessed the readers hearers of his word. Yeah. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we come this morning once again. We come, Father, with bow our heads, giving you thanks and glory and praise. Thanking and praising you for each and every blessing you've given us to be here. We thank you, Father. We thank you for this wonderful day. We thank you for watching over. We thank you for our health and strength. And we thank you for being with us in traveling grace. We thank you, Father. We thank you for taking care of us in our trials and tribulations and opening up our pathways and making our pathway brighter. Thanks for the joy that you bring in our hearts and our minds. We thank you for being a wonderful counselor, yeah. mighty God, yeah. everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Yeah. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. And we thank you for bringing us out, being with us in our service here this morning, realizing that this is the day the Lord has made. Almighty God, we pray, Father, that you bless those desired to be here this morning but unable to come. Yes, bless our families and bless the sick and shed in. And those that are sick with this virus, and those that lost their loved ones. Yes. Bless our pastor, wherever it may be. Yes, bless the speaker here this morning. Bless the deacons. And bless our Sunday school. And bless the teachers. Yes. And bless us all. Almighty God, we pray, Father, that you be with us here this morning yes. as we wish and pray to your holy name. Watch over, stand by us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Let us say amen. amen. Giving praise and honor. To our pastor and wife in the absent, and to my wife and to all of God's people, kind of blessings to be here again. Amen. amen. I'm sorry, I don't know what happened to Pastor. Amen. But I'm sorry y'all stuck with me. Amen. <laughs> but today's a special day. 29 years ago, she said, I do to me. Amen. And she's been dealing with for 29 long, hard years. Amen. But I told her we're going out to eat today. Amen. I, I want to cook, but you know how that's going to go. Amen. But that's been all. Of the, do we have any announcements? I don't, there's none of time for our tithes and our offerings. Deacons come and we're going to stand and follow the ushers when they come around. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we thank for us offering. Bless those that gave. Bless those that didn't have but still desire to give. Then you pray, amen. Thank God. to 
Give the choir another hand, amen. amen. Singing from the depth of their soul, amen. Giving high praise and honor to the one and only true living God. To our beloved pastor and wife and their absent, to my wife and to the deacons and deaconess, and to ushers on the doorposts, and won't leave no one out and y'all be mad, to all of God's people, amen. Joy to be here one more time, amen. Now, we're not going to hold you long, amen. In the familiar book in the Bible, the New Testament, book of St. Mark, the 10th chapter, St. Mark chapter 10, and just that 27th verse, Mark chapter 10 and the 27th verse, and Jesus look upon them, saying with men, it is impossible, but not with God. For God, with God, all things are possible. Talk on the subject this morning, God can make the impossible possible. God can make the impossible Possible. Possible means something that you can do. Impossible means something that you cannot do. And now in time, God is our creator. And this morning we're going to talk about a few things, but God is a creator and man is an inventor. But really through God gave man knowledge to invent these things that we have. Cause man didn't do it by himself. Just like Henry Ford, he, he, he took the credit for building the car. But God was the one that gave him the idea. Do you see what I'm trying to say here? And, and, and just like the Wright brothers gave them, God gave them knowledge to invent the airplane. Things in life now I'm looking at how God then gave man knowledge. And as he gave them knowledge and to do things around the world, look for instance, our way from pounds and now. When I step in water, I go straight down to the bottom. But here's a boat, a yacht, a ship, an aircraft carrier that weighs tons of pounds. But when they get on water, they float. Here I am, my weight one pound, and when I get in there, I go to the bottom. Amen. But oh, but when that big ship get on that water, God gave man knowledge enough to figure out how to make that boat float on the water. Now I know what y'all saying. I, I hear you out there. I, I must weigh one more ton more than that boat do. Amen. Cause I know I'm big. Amen. But God got all power that he gave man knowledge enough to take a tree, send it to an international paper company, run it through the mill, and come out paper from a tree. I know it don't seem nothing now, but when they first did that, that's what God do, give man knowledge to take another tree and send it to Georgia Pacific, run it through there and come out as plywood and pallet. See, God gave man all kinds of knowledge. With our phones now, we never dreamed that these phones could be so popular. You can text, you can call, you can Google, you can do anything on that phone. 
but because of God gave man knowledge to do it. But this morning, God told me to talk to you all to let you know that whatever situation you may be in, he got, and he can do all things but fail. And I looked at some scripture he gave me, and, and for instance, the one with Moses. Now, I know y'all done read Moses. Y'all done talked about Moses. Y'all done uh, heard about Moses. But have y'all ever thought about Moses? Watch this. In Esther chapter 1, they, were, they sent out a decree to kill all of the male babies. Okay, and then in chapter 2, what happened was how powerful God is. He had them to put Moses in a basket and send him downstream where Pharaoh's daughter was taking a bath and sending Moses really to the enemy. But watch the power of God. When Pharaoh's daughter saw that baby, and you know how we are, it's something about our baby, it is just like kryptonite. It makes us so soft and easy, amen. Because we be so pretty, you know, I can see Pharaoh's daughter say, ooh, goo goo ga ga goo goo, amen. Because she fell in love with that baby. Now, watch the power of God. Now, Pharaoh's daughter, Send a sister out to find Moses' real mama. And Moses' mama came in and then fixed it that Moses' mama would breastfeed Moses. And then turned around and she got paid. You think about that now? I'm talking about how God fixed that, that Moses' real mama was able to come back and take care of of a son and get paid to for doing it. And then here it is when Moses got grown. He was working for his father in law, Jethro, and tending to a sheep and looked up and seen a bush burning. But the bush was not burning up. But that bush had a voice. And said, Moses, pull off thy shoes. For the ground thou walk upon is holy ground. And when Moses pulled his shoes off, and God told him that, I need you to go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Now, Moses trying to give God, you know, you know I'm handicapping now. You know I can't speak well and all that, but God told me to tell you all, whatever mission that God gives you to do, oh, believe me, God will equip you to do what he wants you to do. He's not going to lead you in that blind. God got your back, amen. And he sent Aaron along with him. Now, when he got to Pharaoh and told Pharaoh to let God's people go, now Moses and Pharaoh got hard-headed and didn't want to do it. Now, here a plague come around called killing the firstborn. They, they put blood on the doorposts. And then they were going, and the devil angel was going to fly around, and the one that had blood, on the doorpost, Death Angel will pass by. Now, I don't know if Pharaoh got the memo or not, but all I know he didn't have blood on the door. Next thing he know, his son died. Now, I don't know y'all know this young lady called Karma. She real ain't she, amen. Now, Karma is where in the beginning of Exodus, Pharaoh then would get killing all of the male babies. But now, here it is now, turn all the way back around, God fixed it that Pharaoh was able to, to experience the death 
of his son know how the other family member felt when their son had to die. Now, Pharaoh felt the wrath. Pharaoh felt the pain that they had. But now, when Pharaoh finally let them go, they took off and they ran up on a Red Sea. Pharaoh's army was behind them. And a sea, a sea, not a fishing hole, not a creek, not a pond, not even a river, not even but a sea, was right there in front of them. Now, in man's eyesight, it's over. It's a done deal. It, there's no way out of this. But let me tell you the power that God has. Power that he has. He sent Moses there, and there he was at the Red Sea. And God told Moses to stretch the rod out. And when he stretched the rod out, the sea divided. And they walked on dry ground. And God can make the impossible possible. And when Pharaoh them tried to cross the Red Sea, the sea came back in and killing all of them. Don't let me know that God can do any and everything. All we got to do is trust him. Now, here, another situation. I know you don't read about it, but just think about it. Joshua when the wall of Jericho, knocking down a wall. They didn't have no wrecking ball. They didn't have no big bulldozer, anything to push it and knock the wall down. All they did show you the power of God. All they did was walk around that wall six days. And then the seventh day, they walked around it seven times. And they took a trumpet and blew the trumpet. And the wall collapsed. God can make the impossible possible because you never noticed that you could take you know, how God did the power that God got. That he could take a trumpet and knock down a wall. Think about this, how powerful, how bad God is by itself. Amen. One more, I know y'all are ready to go, but as I looked at Elijah, there they were trying to pray to God for fire. And now they were seeing who God was the best God. And Elijah told them to Fill up four barrels of water and pour it on the altar. Then it said, do it again. Four more barrels of water and pour it on the altar. Then it said, do it one more time. Four barrels of water pouring on the altar. Now, let me stop here and say, they trying to get fire come down now. Now, in order to start a fire, you need some flammable liquid, amen, like gasoline or, you know, or diesel or, you know, people that barbecue, lighter fluid, and some good pine. That's how you start a fire. And then when you put the fire out, you use water to put the fire out. But here God is telling them to put water on the fire, on the altar, and made the water start the fire. That's the power of God, that he can make the impossible possible. See, we can't do nothing, but that's why we need God. Somebody may be sick. Doctor can say, no, no, no. But God can say, yes, yes, yes. I looked at it, and when my wife was carrying our baby, and 
I came home from working. She was crying. I said, what's wrong? And she said, Dr. Bronson called and said that our baby going to have Down syndrome. And at that time, my cousin worked it for Dr. Brunson, and, and I called the house, and, and I said, what's going on? And she come talking about doing that doctor talk, you know. Well, uh, uh, you know, it may not be a chance, you know, it's going to have. I said, look here. I said, cut all this out. I said, all I want to know is a yes or no answer, cuz. Do you think that our baby going to have Down syndrome? Yes or no? That's all I want. And she said yes. I hung the phone up, didn't even say goodbye. And I picked the seal back up and I dialed one, one, one. One for the Father, one for the Son, and one for the Holy Ghost. And I started talking to God. Now you know it's hard to pray and cry at the same time. But I was praying and crying at the same time. But God told me, boy, get up. What going down to UAMS in Little Rock, and everything gonna be all right. And, and when we got down there, the doctors told us that well, they gonna put a needle in and and, and pull out fluid. And, and when they pull out, if it's dirty, she he gonna have Down syndrome. But if it come out clear, it won't have it. And and there I was crying and holding white hand. And to me. It looked like the needle was about like that. But I know it wasn't, but it, to me, that way it looked like. And when it put it in my wife, and when they started drawing the fluid coming out into the needle, looking like pure spring water. Crystal clear, and, and then turned around, and God gave us a little bonus. They put the ultrasound thing on her stomach, and, Seeing that little boy eyes come open and close one more time. These shears right there. And they called her back and said, you don't have Down syndrome. But when my wife went back to Brunson, they said he had it. No end, no if, or but. He had Down syndrome. But the God that I serve, The God that I got, got all power in his holy hand. And I know God can make the impossible possible. All we got to do is just believe on God and watch God do his work. God is able today. All he wants us to do is have faith. And then he says, without faith, it's impossible to please him. But all you need is a little faith. I'm finna go, you hungry, baby? I'm finna go now. Let's go. <laughs> My wife got hungry. Let's go. Having faith. One day, there was a young lady by the name of Aunt May. Aunt May Worked it for a couple, and she was a housekeeper. And then she got off of work that day, and she went home, and the phone rang. And the phone, on the end, was a son calling. Said, Mama, I'm in the hospital right now. Doctor done gave up on me. If you could, could you come? and see about me. Well, ain't made, didn't have no money saved up. Paycheck to paycheck. But what she did, she went to the lady that she worked for. And she said, would you loan me the money so I can go see about my little boy? But ain't made, to, uh, boss said, I, I'm not gonna loan you the money. <laughs> You don't even need to go down there, huh? But then uh, I can see a May uh, said, that's all right. Uh, I'm going to go home uh, and tell God about it. Uh, when a May got home uh, 
And the first thing that Amy did uh, we went down on our knees uh, and said, Lord, uh, my only son is dying. Uh, I don't have no money. Uh, I don't can't afford to go. Uh, but God told Amy uh, to pack your bag. Uh, go down uh, to the train station uh, and just get on board. Uh, Amy uh, made a way uh, down to the train station uh, and she got on board. Uh, and the conductor came by uh, and she got the Aunt May ticket. Uh, she said, Oh, lady, do you have a ticket? Uh, she said, I don't have no ticket. I uh, said, Well, do you have any money? Uh, Aunt May said, No, uh, I don't have no money. Uh, but she said, Why uh, did you get on this train? Uh, ain't got no ticket. Uh, ain't got no money. Uh, but she said, uh, God told me. Uh, to get on this train. Huh? The conductor got mad. Huh? Picked up Aunt May bag. Huh? Threw it off the train. Huh? And escorted Aunt May huh? off the train. Huh? And the conductor said, all the boys. Huh? The engineer huh? started up. Huh? He built up the steam. Huh? Released the trot. Huh? And released the brake. Huh? But the train huh? did not move. Huh? He tried it again. Huh? He built up the steam, huh? threw back the trolley, huh? and released that brake. Huh? But that train huh? still wasn't moving. Huh? What he did, huh? got the mechanics, huh? they looked at it, huh? said, ain't nothing wrong with it. Try one more time. Huh? Well, huh? he built up the steam, huh? released the brake, huh? but still, huh? that train huh? still wouldn't move. Huh? What he did, huh? he called back to the conductor. Said, anything wrong back there? Conductor said, no, no. Then anything strange happened. He said, well, there was an old lady on this train. And she didn't have no money. She didn't have no ticket. What you do to her? I threw her off the train. Said, where she at now? Said, she down on the ground. On her knees, huh? the engineer said, get that woman, huh? put her back on the train. And when the guy ain't made, huh? put her back on the train. The engineer huh? built up the steam, huh? threw back the trotter, and released the brake. Huh? And that train started moving, huh? started chucking, huh? started chucking huh? down the track. Huh? I ain't made, huh? sat there, huh? no money. In her pocket, said that God told me. God told me. God told me to get on board. All that you believe in God. I believe that 2,000 years ago, I believe that Jesus hung on Calvary Hill. I believe that he died on the cross. I believe. On the third day morning, Jesus got up. I believe that there may be someone here this morning 